Millions of people the world over know me as Weird Al Yankovic. But you, dear friend, can call me Al. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're discussing the untold story of Weird Al Yankovic. For this video, we're taking a look at the life and career of the singer, musician, and comedian known for his musical parody and comedy tunes. Responsible for recording satirical versions of some of the most famous hits of all time, Yankovic's career has lasted for over 45 years and continues to this day. Many of us have heard at least a few of his parodies in our day, and likely got a good laugh out of it. Early Life Alfred Matthew Yankovic was born on October 23, 1959 in Downey, California. He was the only child of parents Mary Elizabeth Vivalda, a stenographer of English and Italian descent, and Nick Yankovic, a decorated World War II medic of Serbian descent. His father Nick always instilled a personal philosophy in which you should do what makes you happy in his young son Alfred, which led to the latter's musical career. Right around Alfred's seventh birthday, a salesman came by his school offering music lessons. Given the choice between the guitar and the accordion, Al's parents opted for the accordion. He took to the instrument, as is now apparent. Yankovic was a precocious child, getting into kindergarten early and going from first grade to third. He later obtained a bachelor's degree in architecture from California Polytechnic State University, but it's safe to say his heart was always in music. Dr. Demento, The Knack, and adding weird to Al. In 1970, Barry Hansen, professionally known as Dr. Demento, started a radio program devoted to comedy, novelty, and just plain strange music and recordings. For, for folks who may not have uh, heard of you or the radio show, what kind of things do you do on it? I play demented music. Which Spike you? Jones, Monty Python, Frank Zappa, Weird Al Yankovic. Yeah. Oh. Young Al was a fan of the program, and managed to get one of his own recordings into the DJ's hands during a school visit, with one of his tracks played on air as early as 1976. Yankovic credits Dr. Demento with the start of his career, and has said, quote, If there hadn't been a Dr. Demento, I'd probably have a real job now. During his college days, Yankovic involuntarily acquired the nickname Weird Al while in residence due to his so-called eccentricities. He eventually embraced it and adopted it as his professional handle, initially while as his university's DJ. In 1979, Yankovic gained attention when he recorded a spoof of the Knack's My Sharona entitled My Bologna, which Dr. Demento played on his show. Ooh, I think the toast is done. The toast is done. Top it with a little of my bologna. The song was also heard by the Knack's frontman Doug Figer, who recommended it be released as a single to the band's label. So later that same year, Al Yankovic's first single was released, with the B-side featuring a song titled School Cafeteria. Capitol Records also offered him a recording contract. Success in the 1980s, stage, screen, and album releases. Al continued to rise in fame thanks to Dr. Demento, joining the Good Doctor's touring stage show in 1981. His act grabbed the attention of manager Jay Levy, who helped Al form a band and open for larger acts. 1982 saw Yankovic release his first top 40 hit, I Love Rocky Road, a parody of I Love Rock and Roll. This allowed him to sign with Scotty Brothers Records, with which he released his first complete album, his self-titled debut, in 1983. His second album dropped in 1984, titled Weird Al Yankovic in 3D. It featured the single Eat It, spoofing Michael Jackson's wildly popular song Beat It. It was accompanied by a music video that aired on the then-blooming MTV. In the late 80s, Yankovic penned a screenplay for the feature film UHF, which performed badly at the box office. This sent him into a bit of downtime for about three years. Return to the scene in the 1990s. Though Yankovic began recording his album Off the Deep End in 1990, due to complications in finding a strong hit and then securing permissions for a lead parody, the album wasn't released until 1993, much to Weird Al's chagrin. However, the album's first single, Smells Like Nirvana, found its way onto the Billboard charts, making it Yankovic's second top 40 hit. And I'm screaming, and I don't know what I'm singing. 
a renewed sense of purpose led to two more studio albums, Alapalooza and Bad Hair Day, featuring successful singles Jurassic Park and Amish Paradise, respectively. We've been spending most our lives living in an Amish paradise. The albums and singles made the Billboard charts in respectable positions. During the 1990s, Yankovic also released a number of compilation albums, including 1994's permanent record Al in the Box, a four-disc set. I admit it's kinda eerie, but this proves my chaos theory. The Makeover and Number One Album. In 1999, Yankovic released his 10th studio album Running With Scissors, along with his new look. Having had LASIK eye surgery, let his locks grow out, and shaved his signature mustache. You don't have a problem with that, do you? Do you? Huh? Do you? As Weird Al himself put it, quote, If Madonna's allowed to reinvent herself every 15 minutes, I figure I should be good for a change at least once every 20 years. Yankovic's next three full-length studio albums were the Grammy-winning Poodle Hat, the Billboard Hot 100 hit containing Straight Outta Linwood, and Billboard 200 Top 10 charting Alpocalypse. I'm sure my critics will say it's a grotesque display. Well, they can bite me, baby, I perform this way. In 2014, his 14th and probably final traditional studio album was released. Mandatory Fun became his first and only album to hit number one on the Billboard charts. Though it marked the end of his record deal, Yankovic promised future releases on more modern platforms and EPs. He also has done and continues to do a number of voiceover roles, notably as Darkseid in Teen Titans Go. You will be cast into the fires of Apocalypse, where you will burn for eternity. Um. You're not, you're not cowering in fear. Your voice isn't threatening anymore. Oh, come on! I'm still terrifying! The death of his parents. In April of 2004, Yankovic's parents, 81-year-old Mary and 86-year-old Nick, were found deceased in their California home. I was very close to my parents, and it's just the, the pain uh, and the grief is just indescribable. And it's, it's something that obviously I still live with to this day. According to the Los Angeles Times, the couple was discovered by relatives who grew concerned after not having seen the two in some time. Upon entering the home, they found that the fireplace had been lit, yet the flue was left closed, so a lack of ventilation likely produced a lethal amount of carbon monoxide. Weird Al Yankovic happened to be on tour when the tragedy occurred. Hours after he heard the news, Yankovic resolved to take the stage. You know, it, it wouldn't have been my choice, but I was on tour and there were a lot of people depending on me and their audiences were in their seats, and um, I just... Like I said, it was, it was a lot of denial. Sometime after, he would go on to say, quote, Since my music had helped many of my fans through tough times, maybe it would work for me as well. It would at least give me a break from sobbing all the time. At the time, I thought that was just horrible, that I, I'd have to share my grief with so yes. many people. But I just found, you know, the love, the outpouring of love from the fans it was just overwhelming. Personal life. Al Yankovic has always projected a wholesome musician sort of vibe in that he's been reported to have never taken any illicit substances, avoids profanity and alcohol, and is a church-going Christian. He's married to Suzanne Krajewski, a 20th Century Fox executive he met in 2001. The couple has one child together, Nina, who was born in 2003. Artist reactions and refused parodies. Though parodies are basically fair game in the music industry, Yankovic always gets permission from the artists to use their original songs. You check with the artist too. You, you have conversations with them and say, hey, what do you think? I'm thinking about parroting your song. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't necessarily have to legally, but you know, yeah. that's one of the reasons I think I've been able to hang around as long as I have, is I don't burn bridges and I want to make sure they're in on the joke. If the band or musician doesn't permit use, Yankovic does not move forward with his version. Most parties do allow the parodies, as some consider it a rite of passage in the popularity game. For example, upon allowing Yankovic to parody Smells Like Teen Spirit, the members of Nirvana considered it proof that they had made it in the industry. I thought, oh, he's gonna tear us apart. And we were all like, oh, man. we were going like, oh man, that Weird Al's gonna get us. And then we saw the video and I was just like laughing. It was really funny, it was really good. Michael Jackson was also a big enthusiast of Yankovic's work, allowing for the parodies Eat It and Fat. When Yankovic parodied American Pie with the Star Wars-themed The Saga Begins, he gained thumbs up from both Don McLean and George Lucas. My, my, this here Anakin guy Maybe Vader someday later Now he's just a small fry Though most are fans of the comical versions, some are not. 
Yankovic claims that only around 2 or 3 percent of approached artists decline the use of their songs. Prince famously rejected Yankovic on multiple occasions. The only person that's really consistently said no has been Prince. Mm -hmm. uh, and I haven't really approached him in a couple of decades, so maybe he's acquired a sense of humor by now, I don't know. Yankovic was also refused the rights to record polka-style melodies of some Led Zeppelin, U2, and Weezer tunes. Meanwhile, despite James Blunt's approval, his label took back the permission Weird Al was given to release the Your Pitiful version of Your Beautiful, so it has yet to appear on any official releases beside Yankovic's website and social media. An influential man. Weird Al has inspired a number of artists and writers. Lin-Manuel Miranda has said that Yankovic had a big impact on him while composing Hamilton. Uh, obviously, uh, we've geeked out about you on the show before, yes. Lin, Lin and I, uh, and so I'm just going to gush for a little bit. Okay. Television producer Michael Shore, the name associated with shows such as The Office and Parks and Recreation, has said that the artist also influenced his comedy writers. Andy Samberg of SNL and the Lonely Island fame unsurprisingly considered Yankovic to have greatly marked him while growing up. In fact, Yankovic appeared with Sandberg's comedy trio in an episode of Carpool Karaoke the series, which was likely a dream come true for the Brooklyn Nine-Nine actor. Because I'm fat, I'm fat, I'm fat, Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. The Biopic In 2010, Funny or Die released a trailer for a non-existent film titled Weird, The Al Yankovic Story. By changing the lyrics and making them about food, you could change the world. Nobody wants to hear a parody song when they can hear the real thing for the same price. Two words. Eat it. In it, Aaron Paul portrayed a vastly exaggerated and dramatized version of Yankovic. A long-awaited actual film with the same title will be released in 2022, with Daniel Radcliffe in the titular role. Anyone got an accordion? The biographical drama will likely share some similarities with the 2010 short, considering its producer Eric Appel is directing the feature and Yankovic himself co-wrote the script. Honestly, we wouldn't expect anything less of a Weird Al biopic. The man made a career of satire. His life story should be told in the same way. And like, how well versed are you on the accordion? Much better than I was three months ago. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.